name is Rabbi Yaakov M. Eisenbach. I work with the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Today, we will show how to kosher a kitchen for Pesach. There are many things that are able to be kosher. Before you do any koshering, as far as Hagolus Kalim, which is immersion of items into a boiling pot of water, all items that will be koshered must not be used for 24 hours and has to be completely clean. Even the pots that are using have to not be used for 24 hours. It does not have to be a Passover pot. It could be a dairy pot, a meat pot, or hummus pot. However, it cannot be used for 24 hours and has to be completely clean. Remember, safety is first. Make sure there are no little children around and that you have no jewelry and no watches. Even if it's waterproof, take it off. Second, have gloves ready to be able to use for the immersion. Once the pot has reached a boiling pot, boiling point, where it is boiling, you take each piece of silverware, prior to usage, check again that it's clean, there is no dirt or food particles in any of the crevices, and simply you go ahead, the pot is boiling, and you place it in there. You go one by one, and you take it, you check it, and you immerse it in there. And this you continue, as long as the pot is still boiling, as you see here, it's a rolling boil, you can continue doing it. Once there's, it stops to boil, please wait until it boils again to continue doing it. The same thing with a becker, you can take silver beckers, here's one for an example, check it that it's clean, take it, and you can let it sit right in there. As you can see, the silverware and beckers are in the pot and it's still at a rolling boil. Now that the silverware and beckers have been in the hot water, we will now go ahead and finish the process of koshering by taking the pot of water over to the sink and putting cold water over it. First turn on the water, because safety is always first. And then we take the pot of water, like this, go out the water, leaving the vessel still inside the pot. This is good also if you have a cold to relieve all sinuses. Once the water is out, you will go ahead and let it cool off in cold water. Now we'll discuss how to kosher a pot. Prior to koshering the pot, it has to be 100% clean and not used for 24 hours. Also, as you notice, this pot here has handles, which has screws in it. A piece of advice is to unscrew the handles off, clean it very well so you make sure you get every corner against the walls of the pot, and then put them back in. As you see, we have a pot with a cover on it. The best scenario is to have a big stock pot where you could just immerse the cover and the pot into that pot like we did with the silverware. However, if you don't have a pot, the way to go ahead and kosher it is like this. Take the cover and immerse it into the boiling water and put it around like this, like a wheel, and you go around and around and around making sure that every piece has been immersed in the water, including the top of the cover. Once you finish this Procedure, you take it and you put it in the cold water. Now we will kosher the actual pot. We will go ahead and have a pot on the side, a smaller pot that has boiling water in it already. Take it and immerse it into the boiling bigger pot in order that the water should overflow and hit all the sides of the outside. Be aggressive when you do this to make sure that all sides get touched by the hot water 
and a piece of advice, have a towel waiting on the bottom so it'll soak up some of the water. As you see, all the size was taken care of. The next item we will capture in the kitchen is the sink. Most common sink that is out there is a stainless steel sink, which can be kashered. However, uh, another common sink that's out there is porcelain, which cannot be kashered, when you have to put an insert in there for Pesach. The way of kashering the stainless steel sink is the sink cannot be used for 24 hours. Again, it must be perfectly clean. Once that process is done, you have a boiling pot of hot water ready to go. You go ahead. Before you go to the sink, you make sure there's nothing in there. For example, the strainer, which has many little holes, must be taken out and replaced. The aerator, also due to the fact that it has many little holes in it, has to also be replaced. It cannot be kosher for Pesach. And again, the sink must be perfectly dry prior to the kosher. Once all that has been done, you go ahead and you take the hot water, and take it and you start never place it down even if you don't have a sufficient amount of water in one pot you can go ahead and continue with the second pot but the main issue is to make sure that it's a continuous flow and not to stop in the middle from that pot you start from the bottom and then you work your way up as you see here you start from the bottom and again it's good for the sinuses here because it's it'll clean everything then you go you get the sides of the sink, and you make sure that everything is hit, and have a towel down also. And if you want to wear goggles for it, so you don't get steamed up, you can, can do it. As you see, one pot was not sufficient, so we will take a second pot. And we will continue from where we left off. You go to the back, and you get the sides so everything gets hit. Get the handles and the handles here. Then you go on to the top of the nozzle, make sure you get that. And for this, you would just immerse it into here to make sure that it's all kosher. Once that process is done, your sink is ready for Pesach. The next item we will kosher in the kitchen is the countertops. There are many different countertops out there. As you will see, there's a list of the countertops that can and cannot be kosher. Once we're ready to kosher the countertops, we have to ensure that they haven't been used for 24 hours and the surface is completely clean and dry. Remember as a reminder, when kashering with hot water, make sure safety comes first, that there's no little kids around, and that nothing gets burnt and you're wearing gloves. Once that is done, you take the pot straight off the fire. Again, never put it down. Once you have it, you take the pot, and make sure you have towels down again because you don't want to flood. And we will go ahead and we start from the back, and we go and make sure we get every single spot from one end to the other end. The next item is koshering a stove top and an oven. Before koshering, you have to make sure that all parts are taken apart and cleaned thoroughly. This happens to be a seal top so no food particles could get into there. There are many stove tops that are not sealed, therefore there's a lot of chomets underneath which has to be cleaned out also. Once everything is thoroughly cleaned, you put it back on and you turn on the fire and you let it sit for an hour. Or another way you can do it is take these pieces, stick them into the oven for an hour at the highest temperature. Anything that has been kosher with the fire 
is fine, but any other areas here must be covered with silver foil. The same thing with an oven, not to be used for 24 hours, thoroughly clean. If it's a self-cleaning oven, you do not have to wait the 24 hour period, but if it's a regular oven, wait 24 hours after it's clean, put on its highest temperature for two hours. The last item we will discuss in Kasha in your kitchen is the microwave. The microwave must be cleaned thoroughly in all its cracks and holes that you have on top. Also, the glass plate must be removed and replaced with a new one for Pesach. Once it's sat the 24 hour period, you would take a microwavable vessel, put water in it, put it on the highest for 10 minutes in order that it should steam up. Once that process is done, your microwave is kosher for Pesach. It is advisable that even after you have koshered it for Pesach, that anytime you do use it, all food should be covered. Wishing you and your family a happy and a healthy Passover. Thank you.